how do we make attributions about other people's social behaviors? Once we've observed the target's behavior, we try to understand it. Attribution is the process of explaining their behavior, of attributing it to some cause. This process takes us from the raw data we observed to our judgment of the target's disposition. But just like any other human process, this one is biased. Our explanations of behavior are not always based in reality, and instead, they reflect our distorted perceptions. Attribution theory describes the attribution process and is illustrated here in the figure. Let's review the example. Imagine a frowning young man pushes past you at the airport ticket counter that just opened up. Initially, without much thought, you make a personal attribution. You attribute this behavior to the person. You judge him to be inconsiderate and rude. Then, with a bit of effort, you make a situational attribution. You attribute the behavior to the situation. You overhear him saying that he is traveling to see his dying mother. Together, you use all of this information to draw a conclusion about the target's disposition, who they are at their core across situations. You realize that there is a good reason for his behavior and that he may not always be this rude. Let's take a closer look at personal and situational attributions. A personal attribution explains the target's behavior in terms of their internal characteristics. Among many things, this includes their disposition, traits, character, and personality, as well as their knowledge, skills, and abilities. When someone is late, you may blame them and assume they are lazy or irresponsible. A situational attribution, on the other hand, explains behavior in terms of the situational characteristics that are external to the target. It could be something about the task, the weather, traffic, other people, or even luck that contributed to their behavior. Harold Kelly's covariation theory says we use data to draw conclusions about other people's behavior. More specifically, we rely on three factors, consensus, distinctiveness, and consistency, to make attributions. It suggests we attribute behavior to causes that are present when the behavior is present and absent when the behavior is absent. This is called the covariation principle. For example, Imagine a good student's poor grade truly is caused by an unexpected illness, not laziness. We notice that when the student is ill, their grades suffer. But when they are healthy, their grades do not suffer. Therefore, we conclude their poor grades are caused, in part, by illness. Now let's explore each of the three factors. First, consensus is whether the target's behavior is in line with how most other people respond to the stimulus. Low consensus means the target's behavior deviates from the social norm. High consensus means most people would behave the same way the target behaved. Second, distinctiveness is how unique the target's response is to the stimulus. Low distinctiveness means the target's behavior is typical for them when facing the stimulus. High distinctiveness means the behavior is unique and likely tied to the stimulus, not the person or the situation. And third, consistency refers to how often the target responds this way in other situations. Low consistency means the target's behavior is not typical for them in other situations. High consistency means this is how the target normally behaves in other situations, too. Generally speaking, we tend to make personal attributions when consensus and distinctiveness are low and consistency is high. We tend to make situational attributions when consensus is high and distinctiveness and consistency are low. We tend to blame the stimulus when all three variables are high. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this theory. Imagine you invite your friend to dinner and they are running late. You ask yourself a simple question. What is the cause of their lateness? The target is your friend, the stimulus is the invitation to dinner, and the response is being late. You start by considering how other people typically respond to an invitation to dinner. Most people would not be late to dinner, so consensus is low. You also consider how unique it is for this person to be late for dinner. Since it's normal for them to be late for dinner, distinctiveness is low. There's nothing unique or distinctive about their lateness. Finally, you consider how consistently this person is late to dinner and to other events as well. They are typically late for school work, and other events, so consistency is high. In this example, we will likely attribute our friend's lateness to their disposition. 
Now imagine your friend is running late to dinner, but there's a blizzard outside. Same target, same stimulus, same response, but a different situation. You would expect other people to be late for dinner considering the weather, so consensus is high. It is still normal for your friend to be late for dinner in bad weather, so distinctiveness is low, nothing unique here. But now imagine your friend is not usually late to work or school in good weather, or in bad weather. Consistency is low. In this example, you would likely attribute your friend's lateness to the situation. The blizzard is the cause of their behavior. Kelly's covariation model is one of many attribution theories. One theme of these theories is that we are not perfect social perceivers. In the next section, you will learn about some of the attributional biases that impact our judgments.